I've always been a fan of urban exploration, and I've seen my fair share of creepy places, but there's one that sticks with me more than any other. One that's twisted my idea of reality and left me questioning everything. About two years ago, I came across a post on a local forum about an abandoned amusement park just off a rarely traveled highway. It was supposedly built in the late 60s, operated for only a few years, and then shut down after a series of accidents. Nobody really knew why it was never demolished or redeveloped, but rumors swirled about why the park was left to rot. The post came with a vague map and a warning, don't go after dark. Naturally, that just made me more curious. A buddy of mine, Jeff, and I decided to check it out one afternoon. We figured we'd snap some photos, explore the old rides, and maybe have a good scare or two. We found the entrance easily enough, a rusted gate partially hidden by overgrown trees, with a cracked sign that once read Evermore Amusements hanging crookedly. A couple of the letters had fallen off, leaving it to read more like Eve Moore, charming. Inside, the park was in worse shape than I expected. Rides had crumbled into the ground, twisted metal and broken parts scattered everywhere. What really struck me, though, was the atmosphere. It was like the park had been frozen in time. Rusted out popcorn machines, tattered remnants of old banners, and the occasional prize teddy bear half buried in the dirt. And the weirdest part? Everything was eerily silent. No birds, no wind, just nothing. We wandered around, taking pictures of the decaying Ferris wheel and roller coaster, joking about how creepy it would be if something suddenly started moving. But as the sun began to set, things shifted. It started with the funhouse. We stumbled upon it in the back corner of the park, mostly intact, with its entrance still marked by faded, grinning clowns painted on the front. Jeff dared me to go in first, so I did, mostly to prove I wasn't scared. The inside was pitch black, but when we switched on our flashlights, I realized the place had been left nearly untouched. The mirrors were cracked but standing, the hallways still zigzagging in that disorienting funhouse way. We started making our way through, laughing at how creepy it was. But as we went deeper, the laughter stopped. Something about the place felt off. We'd been walking for longer than the outside of the funhouse should allow, and the temperature had dropped noticeably. That's when Jeff noticed something in one of the mirrors. A shape, barely visible at first, like a silhouette just at the edge of the glass. We both stared at it, trying to convince ourselves it was a trick of the light, but then it moved. Not us, it. The shape shifted, pressing against the glass like it was trying to get out. Let's get the hell out of here, Jeff muttered, and I couldn't have agreed more. We started retracing our steps, but the hallways didn't seem right anymore. Corners we swore we had turned were gone, and doors we had passed were now closed. The fun house felt alive. The sounds started next, quiet at first like soft, hollow laughter, not joyful or playful, but like someone was trying to mock us. The echoes bounced off the walls, making it impossible to tell where it was coming from. Jeff and I picked up the pace trying to get back to the entrance, but no matter how many turns we made, we kept ending up back at the same place, in front of one of those damn mirrors. Only this time, the reflection wasn't ours. I can't describe it fully, but it wasn't human. At least not anymore. It had once been, I'm sure of it, but its face was wrong, stretched too thin over bones that jutted out like broken glass. Its eyes, if you could even call them that, were black pits, with something squirming inside, like it was alive inside the mirror. And it was smiling, the kind of smile that stretches so wide it looks like the face is about to split in half. We ran. I didn't care where anymore, I just needed to get out of that place. But no matter how fast we moved, the mirrors wouldn't stop. Every hallway, every corner, more of those things appeared in the glass, watching us, smiling, and pressing against the surface like they were about to break through. Eventually, we burst through a door, and suddenly we were outside again. But it wasn't the same park. Not exactly. The rides were different, twisted, like they'd been warped by heat or time or something worse. Colors bled into each other in ways that shouldn't be possible. And that silence, the absence of anything real, it was still there, only more oppressive, as if the air itself was dead. Jeff grabbed my arm, his face pale. This isn't right, he whispered. He didn't have to tell me. We headed for the gate, trying not to look at anything else. But as we reached the exit, I made the mistake of glancing back. The fun house stood there, its clown faces now cracked and peeling, but watching us, following us. That night, I didn't sleep. The park stayed with me. The images, the feeling of being watched, and when I closed my eyes, I could see those mirrors, the shapes inside them. But that's not the worst part. The next day, I tried to find the park online again, to see if anyone else had talked about it. 
The post was gone. The entire thread, deleted. There was no record of it, no mention of ever more amusements anywhere. I even drove back to where the entrance had been, but the road didn't lead to the park anymore. It led to a clearing, overgrown and untouched, as if the place had never existed. I haven't talked to Jeff since then. I tried reaching out a few times, but his numbers disconnected. I asked around and even checked online, but there's no sign of him anymore. But the thing is, sometimes when I look into mirrors at night, I see something. Just for a second, a silhouette, like a figure trapped behind the glass, pressing against the surface, smiling that same horrible, broken smile. And I swear, sometimes it looks like Jeff. I never thought I'd be one of those people, the kind you read about in creepy forums or hear on late night podcasts. But after what happened last year, I don't know how else to process it. It's been haunting me, gnawing at my mind, and I feel like writing it out might help. This all started last October. I had just moved into a small rental house on the outskirts of a quiet town. It was a cheap find, and being a young guy trying to save some money, I figured the outdated feel and the remote location were worth the rent. Besides, it was only temporary until I could get back on my feet. The house itself was nothing special. Two bedrooms, a tiny kitchen, and a creaky old living room with a fireplace I never planned on using. But it was the woods behind the house that first got my attention. I remember standing on the back porch, staring into the endless trees. There was something off about them, something wrong. The way they swayed in the wind, like they were shifting in place but never truly moving. I started hearing things at night within the first week. The sounds were subtle at first, soft scraping, like branches against the windows. Sometimes it felt like it was coming from inside the house, but I brushed it off as the old place settling. One night, I woke up around 3 a.m. I didn't know what had stirred me at first, but as I lay there, I heard it, whispers, faint, muffled, coming from somewhere downstairs, the kind of sound that immediately sets every hair on your body on edge. I told myself it was just the wind, but then I heard the distinct creak of the back door opening. My heart stopped. I don't know why, but I didn't get up. I just laid there, frozen, listening. The whispers grew louder, and I realized they weren't coming from outside anymore. They were inside the house. The next morning, I went down to find the back door wide open, though I had locked it before going to bed. I checked every corner of the house, every shadowy spot, but found nothing out of place, except for a thin layer of dirt, almost like ash, scattered near the doorway. I shrugged it off, telling myself it was just wind and dirt kicked up by the draft. But the next night, it happened again. The same whispers, the same sense of something, someone moving through the house while I lay in bed, too terrified to move. And again, the door was open in the morning, and that strange ash-like dirt was there, scattered more heavily this time. That's when I started locking myself in my room at night. I bought one of those heavy-duty deadbolts and drilled it into the door. It didn't help. One night, I woke up to a loud knock on my bedroom door. Three knocks, slow and deliberate. My heart pounded in my chest, and I couldn't move. I couldn't even scream. I listened in horror as the door handle jiggled. Then slowly, methodically, the knocking resumed. Three knocks. Pause. Three more. Then the whispers started again. Only this time they weren't muffled. They were right outside the door, seeping through the cracks. I strained to make out what they were saying, but the language wasn't anything I had ever heard before. It was guttural, ancient, and filled with malice. I stayed awake until dawn, gripping a kitchen knife I had brought up from downstairs. The knocking stopped, but the whispers never truly left. I could hear them just faint enough to be on the edge of perception, no matter where I went in the house. One night, the electricity went out. The house plunged into darkness, and I lit a few candles I kept for emergencies. I huddled in the living room, waiting for the storm to pass and the power to come back. That's when I heard the scraping. It wasn't like the branches brushing against the window anymore. It was inside, closer, something dragging itself across the floor, slow and deliberate. My breath caught in my throat as I strained to see in the flickering candlelight. That's when I saw it. A shadow, just at the edge of the room, crawling on all fours. Its limbs were impossibly long, stretched and unnatural with bones that jutted out at sharp, awkward angles. It didn't walk. It slithered, dragging itself forward. Its face, or what I assumed was its face, was nothing but darkness, a void with empty eyes that looked like they were swallowing the light. But the worst part, it was smiling, 
A wide, unnatural grin stretched across what should have been its mouth. I couldn't move. I couldn't scream. All I could do was sit there, frozen, as it crawled closer and closer. The whispers grew louder, like they were all around me, inside my head. I blacked out. When I woke up, I was outside, lying in the woods, covered in that same ash-like dirt. The house was still behind me, dark and silent. I had no memory of how I got there. No idea what had happened after I saw that thing. I left that day, packed up whatever I could fit into my car and drove until I hit the next town. I didn't stop until I was miles away, and I've never been back. I've tried to research the house, but I found nothing. No record of previous owners, no local legends, nothing that could explain what I experienced. Sometimes I wonder if I was losing my mind, but the thing is, every now and then, I still hear the whispers, and when I sleep, I see that smile.